going to have to act if we want to live in a different world. Hello and welcome to Love Seat. Sitting with me is Suede. Hey, I'm Victor Von Zoom, and we're going to talk about a terrible, terrible movie. I mean, not not terribly from like a like a, a was, sort of. It was pretty bad. Like not terrible from like a visual standpoint, but like script and uh, acting and uh, basically everything else. Yeah, acting was all uh, over the place in this for some. Even reason. the music was bad. To be honest, the, I didn't I didn't notice the music, so I'm glad you that you paid enough attention to realize it was bad. <laughs> yeah, e- even the soundtrack was not good, um, and uh, it's, it was very much uh, typical of uh, Netflix uh, to make that kind of like uh, soundtrack going on. Uh, if you've seen House of Cards, you probably know the loud opera song that plays extremely obnoxiously about halfway through the movie for like five not not five minutes but like four minutes and it's just completely makes no sense in the scene whatsoever but the movie we're talking about is of course War Machine Netflix Netflix's first original movie that they put on there that everyone is freaking out about. War Machine. Oh, it's it was supposed it was, to be great. It and was then it yeah. Wasn't. I really I was looking forward to it because I thought it was actually going like because it's like it's gonna be a kind of a satire this whole thing, but it's like. But it uh, wasn't a satire. It was it, a political hit piece. It, yeah, it was a propaganda. It was piece. Netflix trying to get it on Mar- on Michael Moore's racket? Yeah. And it, it, it was the super size me of war documentaries. Yeah. Or, 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 or with, well, all the baggage, with all the baggage that carries. So uh, yeah. uh, to uh, those of you who don't... War satires, I should say. Yeah, to those of you who don't know, well, to war movies in general. Because, like, yeah. Jesus Christ, that... Actually, wait, act... super size me wasn't like a war. What the fuck am I saying? Well... Uh, it wasn't, but like at the same time, it's still, it, it, it's... It, 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 it was the Michael Moore documentary of war uh, bowling for Columbine satires. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it is the. It, it was just really bad. Um, there's yeah, you were saying. Well, I mean, super size me. Even if it wasn't Michael Moore, I still think that's a better. Well, in the in the words of military.com, I think that Super Size Me is a better canny illusion than Brad Pitt's, canny illusion. Brad Pitt's canny illusion to General McChrystal. His canny illusion for, like, really, how is that an illusion? And, and, like, they it's called it a just, canny illusion. Like It's very obviously supposed to be McChrystal in the movie. I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, you know, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, so maybe we should explain the actual plot of the movie for those that okay, don't know. Okay, so, start from here. Do, do we want to go with the meta plot or just explain what the movie is? Do, 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 just explain the actual plot okay. first, and then... So, a few years back, at the height of the Obama administration, when he before he was trying to pull out of Iraq, he was trying to find a guy to put in charge of the whole situation. Well, not Iraq, but... Uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. He was trying to find a guy to put in charge of the whole situation. He decided on four-star general Stanley McChrystal. Now, let's get this straight. McChrystal was a boss. Because he was. He was in charge of special forces in Iraq. He was yeah, a boss. He was, he, was, he was a ranger. He was airborne. Like He was the real deal. And I say this as a somebody who understands how the officer structure of the of the United States Army uh, works more or less, at least on like often a, they are not the real deal. But yeah, this, very often he was uh, the real deal. Especially like everybody outside, like the like the Marine Corps even has has like more than its fair share of officers that are just you know no like no neck uh, English majors. 
ha ha, I'm talking about myself now at this point, aren't I? Yeah, but no getting to be majors that didn't getting know... to be an officer just because you went to college is like a whole other issue for a different episode. But... Yeah, but that's essentially what, what I mean. Like what I'm alluding to is that, funnily, I was alluding. Uh, uh, what I'm uh, alluding to is that that's what was going on with that. Is that like a yeah. lot of the time when in the officer structure, it's people that are totally out of touch that never worked for the system from the ground up and have no idea who they're actually in charge of. And what they're mm-hmm. actually doing because they don't understand anything but outside of their staff, which is what this movie tried to do was was paint the picture that McChrystal or his stand in in Brad Pitt's uh, General Glenn McMahon, uh, McMahon yeah. right. didn't know how everything was outside of his outside of his staff. And that was bullshit. That was bullshit of the highest order because McChrystal was like McChrystal was like almost up there with Mattis. Like Mattis is is far more legendary, obviously, but like McChrystal was like he was he was a soldier's general, which is actually something you want, as much as the modern modern like uh, for so- whatever reason, our modern politicians and modern journalists keep trying to tell people, like sell everyone on this myth that you don't want warriors in charge of anything. They 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 want to keep telling like they don't they. And that's a common thread that this movie kind of exemplifies in in their thinking that they they really dislike the idea of anybody who's ever seen blood and guts being in charge of any situation, even when that situation is because military in nature. Because they can't put themselves in the situation of having done so. And this might just be me kind of projecting or like doing like armchair philosophy, but a big theme of the movie is like you know the the blood and gut style like. Uh, seamen to admiral, but like army equivalents. I guess be like private to general, uh, like combat experienced guy is somehow divorced from the real world because he went through the system from the ground up instead of laterally, and this means that he's lost touch with the world outside the military, and somehow this means he doesn't know what's really going on, and so of course. Oh, oh, only our superior college uh, Democrat, and like, uh, no offense to the Democrats in the audience, but like, that is the archetype they're pushing for. Only they really understand the real world enough and the real politic to, to really be the responsible with military power. And that tone is immediately fucking like you. It's immediately- obvious from the instant the narration starts. Yeah. That it, it, you can t- you can taste the smugness. It is so in bad. That voice. It is awful. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely terrible. And like, especially because I'm pretty sure, you know, like like like, like, like So the narrator in the movie is a Rolling Stones. Is the is the stand-in for the Rolling Stones article author that originally wrote, like, a hit piece on McChrystal after the whole, like... Yeah, which was uh, insane, and there's actually a lot of bullshit to that. Yeah, but he made a lot of it up. Yeah, my, our, the guy's and, name was Michael Hastings, and he... Yeah. Like, and, it true to the movie, or the movie true to his story, he was a Rolling Stone, uh, he was a Rolling Stone writer that, uh, that McChrystal let him into his core staff and treated uh-huh. as one of his own to show him the inner workings of what he was trying to do, and the dude took every all the information, all the access, all the privilege he had, and yeah. basically wa- like got like as soon as he and was it, like he back in, it to write a hit piece. Yeah, as, as soon as he was back in the U.S., he shat all over him. Yeah, and the Obama really administration used the article. Yeah, and then yeah. the Obama administration used the article as uh, like boosted the article because like we know that somebody like they had there had to have been like social engineering firms that boosted it more because the Rolling Stone doesn't actually have like that much of insane readership anymore. And also like this all happened in like, uh, I'm pretty sure this all happened in like, um, the, the events of this was like 2000, like 2010, 2011. Yeah. Around that time. And like that, basically, like when 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 this all happened, not even uh, yeah, when this all happened, it was when uh, it was like between 2010 and 2012, or like tw- I, let me look it up. It was like War Machine came out just a few months ago, obviously. 
but I'm trying to remember when the events of it. It, it was. Uh, exactly it was. It, it was. Um, it, it was around 2012. It was like 2011, uh, because a bit, if you remember, a big plot, a big point of the, uh, or a big part of the movie rather, was the, um, you know, the, the whole re-election thing. Yeah, the, the I remember that. So it was 2011. It was it was like around 2011 through 2013, and they had. Uh, God, it was it was so weird watching this movie. Because there was just, like, so much stuff that just was out of place and and strange from, like, the top to the bottom. But let's focus on the politics of it. Uh, it took place between 2011 and 2013, focusing on, like, a lot... Uh, like, when McChrystal tr tried to uh, take Hellman Province and basically solidify U.S. control in the area and drive out any and all insurgents. And essentially... Uh, McChrystal had this guy, Michael Hastings, let him into his staff, showed him everything from the top to the bottom. And then Michael Hastings took all of that, wrote this, wrote an article that was functionally a hit piece on it. And the Obama administration blew it up and used it as an excuse to fire him because they didn't actually want him to succeed at all. And then they, but no, they, yeah, they really didn't. And they no, just no, weren't no. trying. Yeah. They were just, you know, it's more, more, you know, perpetuating war because it, it like, you know, funds everything. No, it, 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 it's, it, it's not even to, to be more even handed. It's not that they didn't want him to succeed. It's that they did. He didn't give them the solution that they wanted. And he, the, the realism that he was sticking to, wasn't the reality that they, they wished for. And so it was, of course, inconvenient for them to uh, have him be, like, continuing to be in that position, uh, spouting off troops that weren't really uh, in line with what the administration wanted. Yeah. Like, and it's just, it's... The, the guy the guy who even wrote the article was a strange figure himself because mm -hmm. he was a war prisoner he he was a prisoner of war for a while and he uh his fiance was killed what like was ki his fiance was also a reporter who had her car ambushed in Iraq by uh insurgents and they killed her and it it like really fucked him up but he also he also wrote the runaway general, uh, the runaway general that was like a profile article for the Rolling Stone because he was a contributing editor, and he was a, he was a, he was a reporter for fucking BuzzFeed, like the guy, and 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 furthermore to this, like it, it was what was really strange about that whole thing was that the dude also got like you know he uh, removed there's a, a conspiracy there's a controversy and a, and a conspiracy theory that he was killed. Because he, he died in 2013 when his car, like, his his car crashed into, a, like, a wall. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, like, a, a lot of people believe that his car's, like, inter like low jack, uh, <coughs> in, like, internal computer was hacked. And it, like, oh, it, because he had, a, like, you know, a very, very modern vehicle, apparently. And, like, he had meth in his system and stuff, but he had, like, never had a, a history of drugs. It was very <laughs> strange. But I mean, you know, after what he did to McChrystal, I could see some of his staff doing that, especially after the dude like outright started calling a bunch of his staff killers and murderers and everything. Yeah, but you know, the, the whole the whole plot of the movie though is basically the lead in to like McChrystal going into Afghanistan, being given like being put in charge of everything, and then up to the point of him meeting this Rolling Stones. Uh, this is Rolling Stones uh, writer in uh, in the movie. It's France, though I think in real life it was actually in uh, the UK. Um, not sure why they would put it in France if it was in the UK. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, and then after that, it, 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 the narration gets kind of even more pretentious and like obnoxiously condescending, because from there. As soon as he meets the Rolling Stones writer, up to that point, the movie had kind of been a comedy. Not really in the sense of like being actually funny, but they were trying really hard to make it like a sort of like satire of 
McChrystal as a person. Uh, yeah. And then and after where, that, like, Brad Pitt's character, with, like the, his his portrayal of, of McMahon, uh, like his character uh, was uh, like Glenn yeah. McMahon or something. It was the uh... yeah, it, it was just completely exaggerated. It was just the most like ridiculous, nonsensical, like straw man of a modern you know uh, staff officer that I, I've seen in a long time. And it was just completely insane. It was just ridiculous. But then as soon as he goes and meets the Rolling Stones article, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is me. Me, the narrator, was also this guy who was, I guess, writing an article or whatever. From there, it's all just one big, like, like scene after another of just some kind of, like, uh, like, of just like some kind of like I don't know, trying to force like poetic justice or something, or doesn't make any sense. Trying to imply that McMahon is like a terrible person, not because he thinks you know he can actually accomplish something in in Afghanistan, and you know he can actually make things better, he can actually fix things, but because his reasons for doing so are. In some way, self-serving. Yeah, and then and then they it, they it, it, they person they personify that self-serving like this. It the whole of the writing was really badly done in that regard. Where like they they tried to personify him as being really self-serving by saying he wasn't the there because he believed in the people of Afghanistan. It was because he saw himself as a general who was there to win a war, and it was a war that he could win. Even in the face of everyone telling him it wasn't a war and you can't yeah. win it, yeah. it's like no, it, it, that's it, not at all they, what the fuck was going on. But they decided to characterize it the whole yeah. entirety of the conflict Personally, as that for the express purpose of making yeah. his character in the movie look like an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Firstly, even in the movie, it doesn't make sense because even if he's not really there because he gives a shit about the people of, of, of Afghanistan. He's still been told, go fix Afghanistan so we don't have to worry about it. That's very clearly what he's trying to actually do. So it doesn't matter whether or not he gives a shit about them personally, as long as he's doing his job. But more than that, they're trying to imply that the fact that generally when, you know, high-ranking officers, generals especially, or, or, or other, you know, like, 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 or other, like, admirals and so on. Generally, when they get very personally interested in something, it's because it makes them feel... Like they're trying to imply that it, it, sort of, it, it sort of gets them off. It makes them feel important. It's the, only, it's the only taste they ever get of real power, blah, blah, blah. I suck Obama's cock all day. I think that, you know, House of Cards... Should be a documentary. Oh my god! Because I, I because I I love fucking Washington politicians so much that like that fell apart that kind real of, fast. Yeah, no, it, it it it's trying to be like because they aren't really central to power in the modern day as compared to like some asshole senators or whatever on Capitol Hill. Like war is the only time they feel like they're important, and so of course. You know, all the generals, they'll always choose to go to war if we're not going to war, because then they get to pretend like they matter. And that was the kind of, like, they basically said literally that war is always going to be the choice they make because they get to pretend they matter. That was basically what they were saying. And so what they were trying to apply was McMahon, for all his, you know, for actually saying... I think we can actually, you know, win this and not just like, let's just give up and leave, right? All of that, because it, it came from a position of, well, you know, I, I, I don't want to just leave and be like, oh, I didn't do anything. I, I just fucked up. Then, then it's wrong to do that, even if he could have actually succeeded, which he might have. Except that, so that then later they, they make some whole big, like, stupid scene of like how no, it just doesn't work. Yeah, and it but it was really strange because it's like what what was really weird was like this this movie was put together like the way this movie was written from like a a liturgical technical perspective was 
it was put together. It was almost like a movie by wire where the guiding, like the guiding pylons that they wired everything together with. Like, you know, you have a plot, you took the metaphors, you have a plot line and you have individual pieces that are holding this line together. They wired it, essentially they wired it together using two, two characters, one of which was really important, but never shown to do anything like, like one of like was very subtle. And the other one was the narrator. So the narrator is yeah. the, this guy named Sean Cullen in the movie, who's a stand in for. Who was a stand-in for Michael Hastings? He's played by Scoot McNary, so he, he's like smug and condescending as possible, mm, and of course, uh, because that's just how Scoot McNary acts. And uh, like he's and he's the narrator of the whole thing. The other guiding line that is a character is the fucking ambassador, who basically just throws every character he is in touch with under the bus at all possible times. Yeah. And then it, it, it like and keeps like impl- it keeps being implied it's like he knows better what he's doing and it's like no he's a fucking ambassador he yeah. like, he's a piece of shit Western this is how Western politics work diplomacy the actual diplomacy is either made by back like they're either backroom deals done by like diplomatic corps representatives that are being paid off by corporate representatives on the side or it's the actual like leaders of the country or like state secretaries talking to each other the ambassador is literally just a cushy position uh, like a functionally it's a it's a living it's like a vacation job that you get for uh that you get for being like uh con- being a member of the party that's in power at the time and all of the work of your like all your job that is like all the actual like bitch work of your job is done by diplomatic corps representatives underneath you that are functionally unpaid interns like that's that's how ambassadors work in it, like and I only bring this up and get really autistic about the detail of this because this movie tries to portray itself as like a hard hitting like in the words of some of the reporters that were obviously paid to bullshit about this nervy satire when like it gets shitloads of important details that if it that like they're not important in the grand scheme of things but they're the kind of things that like if they actually had legitimate experts working on this movie researching everything yeah. this wouldn't have happened if they had someone with access to the internet for like two hours going over the script they'd be like wait this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong the only explanation is that they not only didn't care but they deliberately got the things wrong to preserve the cohesion of the plot because otherwise none of it would make sense. Yeah. They then, had to deliberately divorce themselves from the reality of how things work. Like there's because a... reality was insufficient to portray these people bad enough for them. There is a sequence of scenes in this movie that are uh, such a complete train wreck on the technical aspect that like I had to stop and break it down and, uh, like when when I when I watched it uh like like, cause I watched it and then someone in my family watched it that like that person is relatively knowledgeable about politics. And like, mm-hmm. they were like, what the fuck is this? And like, it, it, it was, they were, they're relatively knowledgeable about the politics of the region and the Middle East in general. So they stopped it and noticed. And I noticed all the other shit that happened up to it. See, cause I'm talking about is there's this reoccurring side character in the movie that function when he's introduced, he doesn't even make any sense. He's a black Marine. He's like the one black, Mar- like one of the only two black Marines, this entire, like uh, entire, like platoon of Marines that like refuses to salute and is just like, like angry about bullshit and like, doesn't look anyone in the eye when he has a four star general, like addressing him. Like, no, that's, that's like fucking like this dude would have been like NJP to death immediately yeah. uh, like and instead the, 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 the green weenie would fall from the heavens at like mach 20 and just splatter him, him all over the ground like and he and he gone. and it's like you think that he's just introduced to be like oh this is the voice of the soldiers in the region that have no idea what's going on it's like well hang on i myself me victor von zoom have talked to soldiers that were deployed to afghanistan that actually were in places like hellman province and you know what? They were like, yeah, this is bullshit, but they didn't sit there going... They, they didn't, like, look at the generals and be like, what the fuck are we doing here? Most of them knew full well that politicians were fucking everything around. But, like, yeah. this movie wants to betray that, like, all these, these marines are, like... No, they're all just clueless jarheads. Don't you get it? They're stupid. They need, like, 
like smart like Ivy League yeah and, Hollywood, and, Hollywood liberals to tell them what to so say. So the scene that this guy's introduced, you think like, oh, he's just showing up to be like the voice of the soldiers that are upset about it, so that like you know the liberals can pat themselves off the on the back and pretend like the liberals that made this can pat themselves on the back and pretend like oh this is this is one of the times that we actually like you know address the complaints and address the perspective of soldiers even though they're no. generally more conservative no, no. and then Fucking and then no. as a as a, do, a piece to that it's like oh it's also like one of these sequences where we're kind of like backhandedly showing uh general mcmahon like the mccrystal stand-in character brad pitt's character we're showing him as as being you know nice and, and relatively compassionate for a general because he doesn't like he doesn't like shit a brick as soon as he sees this dude not saluting him like uh -huh. uh, like it's like no it, it the salute thing is nothing to do with if you're an asshole or not when you're an officer it means if somebody's not doing that that guy is either a moron or he's deliberately disrespecting you and both of those things are really fucking bad for discipline there's there's, yeah. there's a reason why this shit happens and they would know this if they actually had anybody from the military being like an advi in an advisory capacity on this movie which increasingly in hollywood there's a lot and a lot more of but this movie makes mistakes like that so much often that i'm pretty sure they deliberately had no, they either deliberately excluded people that could have told them they were wrong from the production or just or like were just dumb enough that they didn't have anybody to advise them on any of this and compounding this i thought this character was just one off for that scene he reappears later in like the the war movie sequence where suddenly you're reminded oh wait this is a satire of a war movie not just uh -huh. a satire where it's the it's the sequence where it's it's his platoon getting like going into engage the 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 operation or whatever the fuck they were calling it to retake to retake quote unquote Hellman Province, yeah. And a series of fucking stupid shit happens where like where like tactically, no, all right, <laughs> it just makes no fucking yeah, sense. Yeah, nothing. What they, do. they take a building and let themselves get shot at. They are right, so yeah. they take a building they with a high vantage point, let them get surrounded by other taller buildings yeah and, and then, then when they see a sniper and you know they, 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 they start like getting sniped, they go we don't engage until we're engaged and wait until literally a guy next to him gets shot in the face and then yeah. when they finally do engage him they show a series of marines miss with a grenade launcher with a rangefinder like seven times yeah. Like, uh, just a Causing million fucking times damage. before they hit it. And, and then when they, they... stay on the roof to get shot at from this building. They, yeah, they, they don't displace. They have line of sight to the people shooting at them. They know they could just go off the roof and, and break line of sight and, so, and they wouldn't be able to shoot them. They know where they are. Yeah, and so this soldier, this, this fucking... Like, they're... Like, they're... they're the like the platoon commander gets like the like the sergeant gets like where he's like he's not he's not allowed to move so he's like all right we're just holding position here and everyone's like are you fucking serious yeah and the the black marine who is like this you know the soldier audience stand-in character from before shows back up he's again and just goes shell, just he's just, just shell shocked to shit yeah just he's shits just a brick out. just out of nowhere shits a brick goes fuck this and goes a wall and leaves the position that he was ordered to hold with the entire rest of his platoon and runs like a mile up the road like just like like several blocks like uh, what like just, sorry, a couple blocks up the road se several, not getting shot at yeah of course, alone again he broke line of sight from the sniper like you're supposed to do yeah the entire Very even easily. worse the entire time he's holding his gun the wrong way yeah like he's holding his gun the wrong way like fucking steven seagal the 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 butt stock of my of like my m4 is actually on top of my shoulder bullshit yeah. like all the way down the street, doesn't get shot, is totally alone without support, breaches an entire, like, compound alone, and he gets there and he finds, oh no, the collateral damage of our grenades, I'm so upset. And he it's like the collateral the damage of their grenades was yeah. somehow a 40 millimeter grenade went through, like, a stone roof. And you're... No, it wasn't even a stone, like, it went through a stone roof. If you look at the actual scene, right? Yeah. When they launch the grenades, they're shooting at a tower that's like three stories high or something. Right? Yeah, and they keep missing off to the left, and the yeah. left is and just this no, open but street. They're, they're missing off into the street. Yeah. But then when he gets to the tower, the, the grenade is shown to burst on top of the tower, three stories up. 
Mm -hmm. Somehow, on the ground level of this building he walks into, there's a hole in the roof where the grenade somehow... I don't know, like, the, the pressure of it collapsed three stories of the roof, and then the shrapnel killed the, the kid, except it's shown that it's just open to the air, like, one, like, just, just like, it's, like, it's, like, it's a one-story building. Yeah. Even though it wasn't. And it's, it's, like, just completely shit locational f filmography. Like, there was... The logistical, the logistical control of like the uh, like this movie and its pacing was so bad that it, it like you, you wanted to hurt yourself and yeah the abs like this is the this is the capper on the scene. I know we've been talking this entire like we're, I I bet like our one listener is going to be like, man, you guys keep bouncing back and forth and rambling about bullshit it has nothing to do. This is where the politics and everything come in. I promise. Yeah, the the sadness of the scene, the great terrible sadness is. It's a dude holding his dead, like, eight-year-old son who was apparently oh. killed by the collapsing roof. And Somehow, later on, and it just cuts to a scene later on when McMahon shows up, like, the general himself shows up with his staff and apologizes to him and gives him gives him money. And then yeah. the narrator's talking about, like, like doesn't, like, basically implying that, like, uh, implying the tone of the scene... Uh, that the scene was already implying itself is that how callous and stupid can Americans no, but like, be? No, it, it, but it's like it's no, like that's fucking whole, like, wrong. Like, yeah, that's fucking wrong. That whole thing is wrong. In Afghanistan, people we like when U.S. forces cause collateral damage like that, paying the relatives for the deaths was not something that was done because we're callous and stupid and think that you know fifty thousand dollars will suddenly make all your problems go away because we killed your entire family. It's because their own traditions. The traditions of, of the, the native Afghans there dictate that you pay that blood money because if you don't, it is a disrespect on them. And they, they the way they view things are, war is war, we can understand this. It is a loss, it's terrible, and it sucks, And I but eventually we will forgive you because you still respected us enough to obey our traditions, and we know that deep down you didn't mean this to happen. That is why it is done. They, we, we respect their fucking culture enough to do that. And these yeah. motherfuckers that wrote this go, ha ha, stupid white people, fucking gay conservative army dudes. Ha ha ha. Fuck them. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, it, there's another scene where like the translator. Oh yeah, is, I is, like, forgot he, to mention he, that. He, he, the scene told... prior to that, as a, they yeah. did it as a fucking joke. There's a bunch of people that they're like, we need to clear out. And he's like, well, the translator's talking to him. We'll get another translator out there. And the the, the only other black Marine is like, these, du these dudes speak Pashtun. And, uh, like, like we can't t interpret that. These dudes take, speak Pashto. And it's like, wait a second. What the fuck are you talking about? There's a village in Hellman Province, apparently. Yeah. That half the village speaks Balaki or fucking Dari, even though Hellman has, like, next to nothing to do with the regions that speak Dari. And the majority of Hellman province speaks Pashto. And they brought an interpreter that could only speak fucking Bala uh, Balaki, but not Pashto. The, the majority language in the entire region that you guys are fucking running into. And apparently, you're just on w the one village that has both different ethnic and, like... Linguist, uh, like, uh, ethno-linguistic groups in the same, in, like, across the fucking street from one another. Yeah. What the fuck? No, it, it's, the research for this movie was trash! As, they were just trying to make it as much of, like, a bumbling, like, clusterfuck as possible. They thought, oh yeah, by the way, we don't even speak the language there. Her, her, her. Yeah, and, like, that was, Look. that was bullshit that happened in, like, rem or, uh, I'm trying to, I think it had, like, something to do with lions or something. That fucking, like, that, uh, that espionage slash war movie about, like, counterterrorism options, uh, operations in, in the Middle East before, like, the war in Iraq really hit, uh, hit, really hit, like, from, like, 2003 oh. with Jamie Foxx in it, where the entire, like, yeah. the entire conflict of the plot was that none of the main characters that were sent to do counterinsurgency spoke the language. Yeah. Like. Which is just, like, Why? And, like, that Why movie won this? awards. I can't remember the name of it. That movie won awards, and people fucking bought that shit. Like, why? Like, th th there's a reason there's, like, an entire, like, military occupation specialty that's just translator. 
and they have entire colleges set up specifically for language acquisition and nothing else. In yeah, the military. I know soldiers that went there. I know soldiers like they act. It's it's a it's a fucking like uh it's a, it's a JFO. Uh, it, it literally, like they have JFO colleges all down the east and west coasts, specifically for from servicemen from all branches to get trained to be interpreters and translators in multiple languages in regions where there might be conflict. I know soldiers from there. They actually are pretty good at their job. What the fuck is this? Like I know that they have attached. They like they will have attaché interpreters, like the the terps as they're called. That they'll mm-hmm. they'll have on they'll have attached to different units when they don't have enough translators to go around because like everything is stretched thin. But that scene specifically was just bullshit because like literally they're trying to imply that that like you know the the bureaucracy of the army is bumbling and incompetent by forcing the entire situation around it to pr- to prove it as opposed to just showing in a situation that actually happened. Well, no, the, the whole point of the movie is, like, things didn't really happen that way, but we want them to appear like they did for, like, whatever fucking purpose the movie had, which I'm, I am still don't understand why they actually made this. Oh, by the way, Hillary Clinton, uh, not, like, the real Hillary Clinton, but, like, a, like an actor. Yeah, that was fucking Hillary funny. Clinton. That was one of is the only it? scenes I legitimately laughed yeah. at. Because like, yeah. cause, like, they spend so much time. Like, there's a, like there's a scene with fake Obama, and it was great because they never show his face, but you actually think it's Obama. Because like, yeah. and they completely screw him over, and I'll have to go back to that because that scene was amazing and terrible at the same time. And yeah. then they spend all this time like avoiding actual public figures, and then they just yeah. straight up have an act. They have like a scene where he he meets yeah, with the so Secretary of State, Clinton. and it's it's, it's literally an actress that looks just like Hillary Clinton. And you're like, holy she looks, shit. She looks like she looks like a thinner Hillary Clinton yeah. from like like back in 2011, I guess. Yeah. And it, just... it was really shocking cuz like, yeah, it, it it looks just like she used to look. It's really it was really and, I, I thought that was really good casting. Like it's like the uh, fucking like it was it was like the actor, it was like the, you know the stand-in actor equivalent of that scene from the Simpsons movie where like they have this whole sequence where it's just not it's it's Bart skateboarding through Springfield naked and there's nothing but shit try, like cover like not it's nothing but like the things covering over his junk and then there's just a scene where there's just a hole in a hedge that you, only you can see his junk like it's it's just it's funny because the like they spend so much time making it so that, like the John McCain stand in and the ambassador stand ins and the fucking like like all the political advisor stand ins and the fake Obama like you never yeah. see their face and then suddenly it's just Hillary Clinton on a couch being like nah fam I'll do this and like she's the yeah, only she's, political she's being, character like, sassy and like you know yeah like, she's, being, like, she's not even sassy and, like, she's like all business like. It was so weird because yeah. she's like all business and she's the only character in the in- only political character in the whole movie that sat there and was like, nah, general, I think what you're doing is good. I'll help you out. When literally everyone else around her is like, this is fucking stupid. I'm an expert. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know that one character where he was just a complete fucking dickhead and like, you know, like when the general's leaving the, um, the president, like, like the president of Afghanistan's office, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, you're just gonna get everyone killed. There's gonna be like millions of parades for how many people you get killed or whatever." Yeah. Like, I think that kind of like smug, like career, uh, political. That advisor. was the ambassador. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the amb- yeah, the ambassador, like the whole like smug career political like advisor slash ambassador character. I've really noticed is becoming even more of a thing despite how irritating and terrible that archetype is. And I think a lot of it goes back to like, what's his face from Marvel? Or if you remember uh, the, the guy that, Ross. No, the, the, the guy that got killed by um, Loki. Um, there's a bunch of people. Loki killed a bunch of people, dude. The, 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 in the... Um, in the Avengers movie, remember? Yeah, the um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What was his name? The, the, the agent. Uh yeah, uh, Phil Coulson. Uh, that was that was Clark. Gregg. Yeah, 
It's like everyone looked at Phil Coulson when that came out, and they were like, oh, look, here's some white guy that, like, condescends to everyone, and he, like, abuses government power, and he's some kind of, like, some kind of, like, weird authoritarian. But he also happens to support the main characters and, like, the opinions of the writers, so I guess he's right to be an authoritarian dickbag. I guess you're right. That archetype so, has kind of like appeared a lot since the Avengers. So let's just go make Phil Coulson in like like every single new fucking like movie and video game forever now. Like th- there was that one like dick. They even sound like him if you listen to it. They yeah. talk the same. They look the same. They are just. I don't understand. I mean, it proves the once appeal. again that it, it, just once again Hollywood is a tremendous circle jerk. But I, I, yeah, no, it's of, just that they're just made. They're forcing this archetype of the most unlikable douche. Well, it's just it's it's so tremendously weird. Like, it, like yeah, it's it's it. I bet that's just Hollywood circle jerk at it again. But like the entirety of this thing is so tremendously fucking weird because. I mean, I've seen, we've seen a lot of, like, you know, donkey shows as far as movies have been concerned yeah, coming like, out lately. Like, that, like yeah, you know, a, movies that are made by committee, movies yeah. that are edited to shit by, like, the producers after the director and the actual, like, writers were like, wait a second, this was fine. Like, all kinds of shit. This movie, like, from this movie, about halfway through, it feels like just after the fake Obama scene, like, when he, when, like, like when you get to, like, the, like, the, the one and a half hour mark suddenly feels like it's a totally different movie in the sense that like the tone of everything and it's it's a bit just a little bit after they meet the narrator after scoot mcnary's character shows up the stand-in for uh, uh michael hastings that shit was so weird because like the entire first half of the movie is like nothing but like you know kind of like just random slapstick and pitch black comedy aimed at like uh mcmahon like the the mcmahon character that's uh the entire time and his staff just being like, these guys are idiots. Look at them. But they're also like, you know, they're trying, they're, they're being good people. They're gonna, they're, they're getting yeah. screwed over by the system and Obama's no, a bastard and, and yada, yada. Yeah. And then suddenly like halfway through the rest, the rest of the movie is just like, they're good people, but they literally don't listen to anything. And therefore and like, they're, they're, they're just divorced from reality. They're just crazy. There's yeah. no way you could possibly and win the entire time. It doesn't even, anything. they can't even implicitly make it look like they're actually divorced from reality. They just have other characters try to meme yeah. it. They have they other just characters just, it. yeah, just they, tell they you, oh, you're divorced from reality. Have they yeah. have the, they have the stupid ambassador talking, like, you just want to be surrounded by soldiers on all sides. Like, they keep trying to push, the, like, they tried to, like, literally, like, using, like, mimetic propaganda techniques in the movie, like, beyond, like, what you normally see. We're trying to just push this incredibly obvious meme thread of this guy is out of touch with everybody. And it's like this, but like at the same time, they fuck themselves because they also are trying to make it look like he's not that bad of a dude. He's just an idiot. And they yeah. failed miserably because like all the, because like it, uh, maybe it's because of Brad Pitt's acting, but like every scene with him is so goddamn genuine, even though it's so fucking goofy. And like just the, the, like the plot, it's like the plot, Forrest the writing, Gump, and the acting. Like, all three Forrest of them are. Gump joined the special forces. Is how I would describe Brad Pitt's character. Yeah, a lot. like it's so fucking weird because it's like the acting, the plot, and the narrative, and like the the plot and the story. If you know, like the differentiation between plot and story, the plot, the story, and the acting itself. Like all three of them are totally dissonant with one another, and it's fucking it's, weird. It's just it's. It is not cohesive at all. Yeah, because nothing fits together at all. Like, and and it's just it's so goddamn strange because the entirety the entirety of the narrative that the media in general had been pushing for about when it came to like the military and how the U.S. has conducted warfare since Vietnam was politi- like po- politicians interfering with military matters is really bad. And then this movie comes out and basically the conclusion that they're trying to force the audience to draw from it at the end of the movie is... It's only politicians should be in charge of military Yeah, matters. because generals don't know what they're doing and they're morons, yada yada, blah blah reasons. Yeah, no, but it's even more than that. Speaking of Vietnam, they say outright 
that counterinsurgency has been failing since Vietnam. Yeah. Which doesn't really make sense because Vietnam wasn't a counterinsurgency war. There yeah. were very distinctly two sides. It was guerrilla warfare that doesn't make it insurgent warfare. You aren't... It, 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 and a counterinsurgency war is when the people you're fighting are living among the people you're trying to protect rather than it being a north-south thing where the people in the north are trying to kill the people in the south like it was in Vietnam. Vietnam had nothing to do with counterinsurgency at all. And I, it's, it's just ridiculous that like they tried to make that parallel. Yeah. To try and like force the meme even harder. Like, oh yeah, he's just going to fuck it up like in Vietnam. Even though Vietnam was I, completely different. Yeah, was completely that, different that was a giant animal. point. And I mean, if I, can, if I can use that to segue to some of the other stuff that we should be talking about in addition to just the War Machine review because it's all kind of interconnected. Mm-hmm. If I, I know this is going to sound conspiracy theory ish, but it honestly, w- at this point, just with how much shits happened, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if parts of this movie were so dissonant because they were reshot to add in dialogue and scenes like that to try and like imply to people that Ma- that people like Mattis are fucking stupid. Because yeah. if anything, as far as like as far as the whole Trump administration and just the Republican Party and conservatives is in general, that this movie was made by people that are diametrically opposed to them. This much is obvious. It, 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 yeah, it, it, it is very obviously like like the movie was functionally it was functionally commissioned by the Clinton Foundation. Made yeah. on a platform owned by George Soros, directed by an uh, by like a a hyper liberal like gay rights activist uh, Australian TV uh, TV director who never yeah. had any experience in like f- uh, full feature length productions or war movies for uh, like he, he didn't know how to shoot action scenes at all and they gave him a war movie satire because he was like he yeah. was a director of like an Australian sitcom that actually was pretty mediocre like what the fuck. And just it, it, it just this just really shows Netflix can't make movies. They just can't. Like all of the Netflix originals that are just being marketed so hard, and you're getting like paid reviews to be, say how good they are and how Netflix is gonna like overtake cable or whatever. They're all really crap. Well, except for like honest. Daredevil. <laughs> well, D- Daredevil is like the exception that, that's, like, that proves the rule. Disney. Yeah, like the, the thing about Daredevil is, is you, you, you get like you, you get big Disney in there, like making sure they're not fucking it up, or you have like the Warner Brothers or whoever. Yeah, it, like well, that's the only Warner, reason Warner Brothers are part DC, the Disney is Marvel. Yeah, but um, well, yeah, yeah, but, but, but they all they also own, or is it like Fox? I mean, whoever owns um X Men, X Men owns uh yeah, Fox owns X Men, Sony Fox, owns. Yeah. So yeah, he, I, just, I was I wasn't sure if Fox also owned Daredevil because I'm pretty sure no like, the, the, Daredevil like the old Daredevil movie Daredevil is still what, Daredevil wasn't the whole reason why that happened. Right, this is going to be a weird aside, but the whole reason why that happened was yeah. because in like it was like Marvel had a second co- had like a uh, a big comic book crash in the mid 2000s mm-hmm. and they sold all of they sold the rights to their most major characters to other to other studios to produce movies so they could use to produce movies and stuff for them yeah, because they Marvel to, have the to, for yeah, to stave off bankruptcy. So that's why like the X-Men like the X-Men, the Avengers and Spider-Man up until this point were actually three different franchises because Sony owned the Spider-Man license. And like, as far as movies yeah. and TV were concerned, like Marvel kept all the copyrights for, uh, for comic books. But Spider-Man was owned by Sony, mm-hmm. and then the X-Men, the entirety of the X-Men and all characters associated with them, with the exceptions of, like, crossover characters like the Maximoff twins, those were owned by, um, the, the, that was owned by Fox. And then Marvel kept the rest of them because they didn't think they were really that marketable until Disney bought them. And, uh, yeah. and like, Marvel Studios happened. But... Yeah. Uh, back on point about all of this like i was saying i wouldn't be surprised if some of that movie was reshot to try and because like let's see all of these people that made this movie all the people that were associated with it were di- are diametrically opposed to like the current like the the current political climate the current trump administration the current whatever you want to call it the zeitgeist of the right and 
the uh, something that a lot of them will have to that that some of them are obviously smart enough to contend with is that the real uh, like that as far as at least the Trump administration and public concern goes, people like James Mattis are actually like the are like some of the real like cornerstones of that of that current like support. Yeah, and they're they've been trying and like so them and people like Kyle Kalinske and everybody have been trying to fucking. Like, I'm not even saying that they're all on the same, they're like, they're like, I'm not like fucking secular talk is not even in the same realm as like Soros and everybody else, but they're on the same page overall. And that a lot of people on the left are outright try like without, you know, we're not outright, but rather like they're trying very, very hard to, sub uh, to subvert and essentially just ruin the idea like the reputation of of uh, like you know large figures on the right and the center like james mattis and the thing about james mattis right now that is the core to his being that is a real huge linchpin in the current administration and, and the and the way that we're conducting wars in the middle east is that he was the guy who came up with coin he was the guy who came up with counter uh not counter intelligence counter insurgency and the left, it seems, has collectively been trying to get rid of him ever since he came on the radar. Even though he was like he was a huge figure before, and then suddenly the mainstream media during during like him getting us uh, when he got Secretary of Defense, the mainstream media suddenly was acting like this dude was an unproven piece of shit. And nobody's ever heard of him. He's just a dork with like a bunch of names, like. The mainstream, like, you remember when that happened where, like, the mainstream media was trying to paint him as, like, oh, he's the general who reads. How quaint. But it's like, no. No, this guy has a, has a reputation on purpose. And he's the guy behind counterinsurgency. He's the guy that wants to, you know, figure out ways. He's the guy that is figuring out relatively successful ways for Western powers to actually stabilize the region. And they're trying to fucking just take the legs out of under him with stuff like this. And under him, out of under him and everybody else that could have ever been, like, on the same page as him. Like uh, General McChrystal. I don't know, was that too ranty or... No, it, it makes sense. I'm just trying to think of how to really, like, continue that line of thought. Uh, it's really, I think, just about making excuses for the Obama administration saying we're going to get out of Iraq and Iran, we're going to get out of the Middle East, and then not doing it by trying to imply that the reasons we didn't do so are because of incompetence in the military, rather than Obama making promises that just couldn't be kept in a reasonable way. So tr trying to shift blame is what I think it's really all about. Yeah. And, 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 and then, like, Trump getting elected, I don't think was anticipated at all. I, I don't think they, they made it as, like, a, a, like a, an anticipatory hit piece so much, so much as they, they expected Obama's legacy to be, you know, continued, and they expected Hillary Clinton to win, probably. Um, and so because of that... They were really trying to shore up, you know, the various gaping holes in uh, their reputations and um, th th their perception of infallibility or whatever. Uh, their, their perceived infallibility, rather, by just shifting blame for lack of actual success with, you know, all the various, like, who knows how many wars we're really involved in, in the Middle East now onto just like the military and then kind of giving Hillary or whoever would succeed Obama the like the the, the, the public opinion based causes belly to go in and like basically purge the military of anyone that doesn't agree with their 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 really stupid ideas of yeah let's just leave. Yeah. And and and, 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 and try and pretend like things aren't going to get even more fucked up oh, man. because we just left in the power vacuum so that we can get more votes by pretending we, we, we ended the war, even though all we really did was just give up. And There's... all we really did was just, just completely fuck things even more. Yeah. Is there, all right, all right, I'm trying to remember. Um, I, I, I will circle around to this. I, I, I'm 
Uh, I will circle around to it. It will be a point. It probably won't be as concise as that. That's a very good one. Uh, you know, the political causes belli for purging the military is fucking scary, but I could see that happening because that's happened before. But, um, do you know, all right, so newspaper comics, Sunday, Sunday morning newspaper comics. Yeah. Do you know, what is, do you know that one that's like the, the really well drawn one that's, that's like always about like current event politics and stuff but like it's like about it's it's always about the military and making fun of it i can't remember the name of it uh it, not doonesbury yeah it's doonesbury that's the one Dern's doonesbury okay there's a famous doonesbury strip that was a that came out in like uh in like two uh 2007 2008 i think yeah it was uh, that was mocking the bush administration for how they for for ba- like it was it like it was three strips and it was basically like Oh, water bills. It was it was an American soldier talking to a, uh, an Iraqi soldier, going, "Water bills paid through the month. Uh, we've taken like everything else here is yours. We got rid of all of our stuff." Uh, and then and then he's like, "Have a good one," and then just leaves. And then the lights yeah. go out after him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I forgot. We we didn't pay the light bill. You should handle that." And it's like it yeah. became famous because it's like, "Aha! We're gonna satirize just leaving Iraq," but it's only okay when like the conservatives do it. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's or like, it's only a problem, right? Yeah, it's only it was it was only okay to mock mock people for just doing that when they concern. But then you have people like I said earlier, secular talk, fucking Kyle Kalinske and everyone else, like all these other insane fucking like unread encephalopaths on YouTube and the mainstream media in general, going around being like, "What do you mean we can't just fucking leave? We've been in this war forever. What the shit?" And it's like, yeah, because we've been like because. Uh, the previous two administrations, because, yeah, the two entire previous administrations of presidents have been perpetuating this shit for corporate, like for you know, war incorporated corporate, uh, corporate fucking warmongering shit, and then we have a new administration that wants to, that wants to get out properly and not do it in a way that'll just suck us back in within another like handful of years, and you guys are literally gonna sit there going. You know, after all, like, sit there on top of the pile of books you read about this and all, all the articles that you wrote about it and everything else that you said when it was Bush doing wrong and maybe, just maybe a little bit of the time that you said when Obama was saying wrong, now it's suddenly, no, 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 they were right, we should just leave, what the fuck are you doing, Trump and Mattis? We, sh- we should just, we should just leave, we should just take everybody out in a single day and let them all kill each other forever. And it's like, we, I had a discussion with uh braving ruin about this on on the edge cast last night as a matter of fact and like we didn't get into it but like i th- like he might he might have been right he he and a lot of other people might have been right that that you know the middle east will always be a uh, never ending maelstrom of shit but you know l- just just leaving in its current state is not going to is like will only make it a bigger maelstrom of shit Yeah, it's really just people that try and argue that we should just leave are ones who just don't want to think about what that actually means. Because they are just principally going off of their emotions. I'm like, oh, we just feel bad about being here. We feel annoyed that we've been stuck there, so let's just stop doing it. Uh... And, and, and so, like, these are people that don't really actually understand strategy, and they don't really understand the idea of, you know, how other people really work. It's almost, in a way, like they're treating war in the Middle East like a game we're playing, and if we just stop, then all the pieces that are there now will just, you know, go back to doing what they were doing before because somehow we won't have affected them in the long term. It's like they're thinking of them as not even really being people in a lot of ways, despite their whole moral objection to the war being founded on the idea of, yeah, we're fucking with all the people there. You know, they didn't ask for us to be there. We're invading. And yet, when it comes time to be like, you know, well, how do we resolve this in such a way that if we leave, you know, all these people who we've pissed off there won't just like immediately turn around and start uh, trying to fuck with us. 
uh, in a way that makes 9-11 look like, I don't know, the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. And and, 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 and then the, the, you just get blank stares for that because there's no answer because they just don't think about that because they're just not really thinking of these people as, well, like actual people with actual real motives so much as like idealized, like, like, you know, just – just like I idealized, like you know, like Garden of Eden, like innocent children who just don't do anything unless there's like some big bad imperialist there to fuck with them or something. And there's just a few bad eggs, and it, it, it's just really like it really is just a childish, view, just a childish view of how the war actually like has gone and how it's continuing to go and what it really means to be at war. They just, it feels like they just, just fundamentally don't understand that on the opposite side of this giant ball of rock spinning in space with a bunch of gas stuck to it by gravity, there's a bunch of, you know, humans shooting and killing other humans who are trying to convince the majority of the humans around them uh, to side with them instead of these other humans. And some of those humans aren't from there and some of them are from there. But it, 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 it's it's just, I don't know where the fuck I'm going with this, but it, it's just, they don't really... They don't see the big picture. And they, they don't, don't see the big picture. They, 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 they don't, don't see. They don't see the little picture. This either. is something like they, they don't see that they are just other little tiny human beings, also on this big ball of rock that aren't so far away that if some of the humans that w- that they sent over just come back, the other humans won't just be like, okay, well, now that they left, we can go and fuck with them back the way they fuck with us. They, they, they think they think of the world in terms of like, like they don't understand how easy it would be or, or that they're overestimating how hard it is to really go from one part of the world to another. But not only that, but, but how how small the world really can be when someone is very determined. I, I don't, it's, it's like, it's not so much they're overestimating the distances as they're just not understanding that it's only a matter of distance and nothing else. There's no like barrier between the Middle East and the rest of the world. If you leave... There's nothing stopping them from following you. And it, it, things like that. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here isn't, it isn't really coming together the way I wanted it to. But it, it's just, there's just a lack of understanding of how things actually work. Where they're almost approaching it like it's like a video game or like, you know, like a board game or something. When it, that's really just absolutely not how it really goes and they they, they think if, if you just if you just take some of the pieces off the board the, the rest of them just stop doing anything yeah they you know like, oh yeah did you just take all the all the pieces and put them back in the box you know just, just take all the white pieces off the board put them in the box you know the black pieces won't be angry that you know, they killed all their friends and, and try and follow them back to the box and kill them there. They'll just stay on the board like good pieces where they're supposed to. You know, what you're saying is uh, you're, you're talking, you're, you're alluding to the migrant crisis. It, it, in a lot of ways, yes, but it, it's also just how much worse things could be if we just left the Middle East just out of nowhere, just poof, gone. How much worse the power vacuum and the collapse thereof would be. It would be like the whole, like, Gaddafi was holding back the migrant crisis theory, which I, I, I do think there's some, some credence to be lent to that. How much worse it would be 
if suddenly just the West and all, all the other like foreign militaries just pulled the rug out from all, all these various Middle Eastern countries, uh, you know, and, and, and governments were propping up and just let the chips fall where they may. Because most of them are just going to roll off of that board and into your country where you live. Yeah. Which was funny. It, it's really, not going to be contained. Really funny There's considering no containing that in, it. in War Machine they tried to do like a, a comedy montage of of a, a McMahon, like the McChrystal stand-in character, talking to all of these uh, talking to all the different foreign soldiers and making them all have to, like forcing them all to network by putting them in the same room with instead of having offices yeah. and everything. And it was yeah. like he had they had a comedy montage about it because it's like, haha, isn't it funny that like France and, and Germany and the like like France and Germany and like all of these Slavic countries that are all part of NATO that are all NATO allies that are all here because the US is here and, and Britain's yeah. here all have like only like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the soldiers that that uh, all these uh, that like the US and, and to a lesser extent Canada and the UK have here and. You're, and it's like it's played for laughs like ha ah, isn't this dumb that the u.s is like throwing all this weight around and doing this is, is supposed to be the joke but you're just kind of sitting there like no this is a pretty accurate like representation of how fucking stupid nato is because like every like it, like when it when push comes to shove almost all of the countries that weren't former british colonies that are part of nato with some time with the sometimes exception of france and germany they don't contribute fucking anything like nato is, is like when, when all of these conflicts happen they always try they like and the media always tries to portray the u.s as, as like bullying everybody around and then playing world police and everything else but it's like you know it's kind of because they have to because nobody else will yeah and, and it's just it's nato at this point has become the, 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 yeah no, nato is just the united states pretends like the other countries are helping while they do all the work, it, it's the equivalent of like the grown up letting the little kids like do some like tiny little like like a few little jobs that like the, the, like so that they feel like they're contributing. Yeah, but that would with, that, which, that metaphor no disrespect would make respect to actual NATO soldiers from non U.S. countries. You do a great job, but your governments don't, even if you do personally. Yeah, and I mean, it like the worst part about it. It's like that that metaphor is like it's almost too it's it's almost too nice in that regard, because. Like at the at the end of the day, it's like what's, like what's actually going on, is it's not even children that are you know pretending that they're doing stuff. That's the civilians of those countries going, "Yay, our military is helping." And the, the actual military itself is sitting... Like, the guys in those militaries, most of them actually know what the fuck is up and are like, yeah, this is fucking stupid, too. Yeah. Like, and... the It's 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 the governments of those countries sitting there having this... this mil, like, having this military force just so they can pretend that they're contributing to something that they, they don't act... That they're not actually making any meaningful contribution to. They're, they're putting on a puppet show for all their civilian populations. Yeah. And it, it, it's really just, it's all just a shit show. <sighs> did I say, uh, did I say Edgecast earlier or not? Yeah, you did. You, you said Edgecast. Yeah. What, what, what's the issue? Nothing. Never mind. All right. Yeah, Never mind. So... No, I'm just I'm just a little bit tired. Sorry. Anyways, yeah, to, to, but back on topic. Um, back on topic. Uh, the it, it's really just it's really just not a coherent movie. There are just so many contradictory themes they're going for, it, and I, I think we've really expressed that enough that they're they tried to go a lot of different directions just to make this one person look bad for various reasons, not the least of which was to make others look better by comparison. 
But um, nothing about it, even like sin, like as just a standalone movie disconnected from reality, really works. Even the soundtrack, like I said, is just not very good. Like I said much earlier, it, it, it's just it, it's not a good movie, and the only reason I can think of for a lot of people thinking it's a good movie is politics and, and it's supporting their personal preference in politics. And I went and looked up like a whole bunch of different reviews for it. And there was a pretty clear divide in how they kind of gave their criticism or their review of the movie between the people that liked it and the people that didn't like it. The people that didn't like it were very diverse in opinion and, and diverse in their reasons for why it was really just a terrible movie. Not even like politically, like, like oh, this is just an obvious hit piece, but also like, like just from like a, a critical, you know, uh, objective review of a, a work of cinema. The people that did like it and the people that reviewed it very highly basically just all said the same thing but rephrased yeah I, almost like they I, were like just like like reading off of like yeah like it was it was cards. like the gamers are dead's article like i mean yeah. i know there's there's other it, it, instances like it, it, there was like it was like it's like it's coordinated almost it's like it, it, it's like they were given a piece of paper with bullet points and there's like these are the things you need to say about it but say them in your own words that these are the topics you need to broach. These are, these are the memes you need to push. And then they just fulfilled exactly those and then done, published the article, you know, put it up. Yep. And, oh, God. Like, there was just so much hokey shit in this movie, too. Like, I think... I, I, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm taking on too much of a task here, but I kind of want to do... My own, if not our own, review of the whole of the whole thing. So, like, so that you know, anyone in our audience would have a more concise, like, I like, I'll actually, you know, write and script a video and put a concise uh, review of it together, uh, like a video essay form. This because there's just so much hokey shit in it that made no sense. That was just weird. When like that it that like it was weird and bad enough that it stuck out to me, despite how much of this stuff like mm -hmm. like despite all of this uh all these other gl more more glaring issues like the 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 cast in general was strange the the way it was marketed was strange the way that like certain character interactions were framed was fucking weird the way like they kind of shat all over this dude's legacy and didn't even like you know like the the article already basically ruined this guy's career and then Michael Hastings, this movie is actually based not even on the article. It's based on the book Michael Hastings wrote that was functionally yeah. cobbled together from the article and all his other notes that he didn't yeah. use in the no, article. Because the article did so well and he was like so desperate for like, wait a minute, this article might be my ticket to fame. He turned it into a book. Yeah. And then like, it's just the casting was so strange because they got all of these like, you know, they had Brad Pitt headline it, and then they surround him with nothing but, like, these, like, B and C list actors that are really good. They're really good actors, but they get absolutely no screen time, and they have no business being in this as supporting roles. They were better actors than Brad Pitt, anyways. So. Yeah. It was, like, fuck, like, Anthony Michael Hall, like, uh, like, Anthony Michael Hall was in it. Fucking Ben Kingsley's in it just to be a joke. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually... <laughs> He was he was one of my favorite parts of the movie. Like I I would I would actually watch like a, a like kind of like a tragic comedy of just Ben Kingsley being being the enough was being the a middle a king in a Middle Eastern country. Yeah, did, 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 no, just being like the puppet president of like you know foreign powers in the Middle East. It would be like a, I would absolutely watch like a tragic comedy of just him being that character. But that's just because he's such a good actor. He can just make the script work. Yeah. But the others didn't quite have that gift, I feel. Which is weird because Brad Pitt actually is a pretty good actor. But like, 
Yeah, well, it's Brad Pitt is a good actor when he's allowed to do what he wants, but he's not allowed to do what he wants a lot because they don't want him playing the character. They want him playing Brad Pitt playing the character, which means he has to be a straw man of himself playing a playing a role that is also a straw man (laughs) yeah because they want him to headline and that means he's not just acting he's acting at he's acting uh on on two different levels where he has to pretend he, he has to not act well enough that people forget that it's brad pitt there's even man like this is like this was like Inglorious Bastards if Inglorious Bastards was a pile of shit, like yeah. almost. It's like they like ev- I'm pretty sure that was the logic behind the casting was everyone saw Inglorious Bastards and was like, oh man, that was hilarious, and they didn't stop and realize no, the reason why that was None hilarious was because Fury. Like yeah, like they didn't see Fury, they saw Inglorious Bastards and they thought it was funny, and it's like no, that wasn't funny because Brad Pitt was just inherently funny in the role. That was funny because it was Quentin Tarantino functionally writing a sitcom in the in like a like a pitch black sitcom in World War II and then letting Brad Pitt just just play a fucking like insane dude from Tennessee. Like yeah. that like it was it nothing his character did was explicitly funny in the script. It was funny when you saw it happen situationally. Yeah, he, and he then let him ad lib visually and like in terms of like line delivery to make it funny, you know, by his interpretation of the script, which really just wasn't done here for this movie because they had a very clear vision of what they wanted. Even if that vision was contradictory and lacked cohesion, it was just shitty all around and ended up not working at all. They still wouldn't accept any kind of deviation from it. Yeah. And it's just, that and like it just it it just kept piling on how hokey and strange the whole thing was like the uh, the like the fa- all right so like even the poster they keep trying to show the general and his like staff which is actually like one third the size of his real staff mm-hmm. was like this super important because they kept rolling characters together and it's like all of the characters on here only had like three scenes a piece with the exception of like maybe Anthony Michael Hall. Oh, they all get their own separate introduction in the narrative. And then like do they're, nothing. They're all so samey you would otherwise forget. They, they and are. then do nothing. Like even though they're supposed to all be important and you could see them logically being important, they don't actually give them the screen time to do anything because this movie was directed by a hack who doesn't know how to pace anything. It's almost like they were only there because they wanted, like, collateral damage on those people as well from the the, the movie. Yeah, and, like, like, and, like a, a good example, the pushing. fucking Navy SEAL character that was, like... Who's just fat for no reason. Yeah, he's, he's just, just fat for no like reason, and, guy, like... I don't know. And they're just like, oh, he, yeah, he's, he's a, He comes off as, like, a fucking retard. Yeah, I mean, he, he straight-up retarded. Like, literally yeah, does straight nothing. Straight-up retarded beer belly navy seal yeah like yeah at least every other character had at least one scene in the movie where they do something that they're best at like they're supposed to be and the navy seals like whole thing is like oh yeah he's just a navy seal he just kills people and he doesn't even get a scene where he shoots anybody like no. they they had him there to be the punchline to a brick joke they didn't make and like yeah. it, it it, like it, it was so fucking stupid because it's like yeah we get it alcoholism is a problem in the army no no, no. it's a problem it's in the just, military in general character assassination all around is yeah. how i really think of and like it, it was it was just so fucking weird and like just everything kept compounding because like the tone was hokey his his whole family life was hokey the fact that they basically shit all over his wife like they i don't yeah. know if you know this they shit all the fuck over McChrystal's wife because the st- the person who like the the woman they had that came in and played um that came in and played like Brad mm-hmm. Pitt's character's wife the real life woman she had an interview with Michael Hastings and she was like no I'm totally cool with this lifestyle like she's like she came on like, yeah every- and, and, and so you read the interview and she like yeah you read the interview and she comes off like the kind of person that's like no I knew what I was getting into I'm okay with like having a cushy life as like a general's wife, I support him. And then yeah. the movie then, is just like so, she's just so upset because he doesn't make any time for her. He's just such a bad family yeah. man. Like fuck you. Y- y- 
yeah, they tried to turn it into some kind of like emotional abuse sob story where really she's just completely broken inside from not seeing her husband very often. And like her saying she's okay with it is just her trying to like not hurt his feelings when really that's not how it was at all. And, yeah. and they're just like, just, they're just doubling down on like, oh yeah, in addition to just being an asshole and like, you know, like, like a shitty leader and like not even like a very good general. Oh yeah, he's also a terrible husband because reasons. Yeah, and then like just everybody else in this movie, like I'll just make two points before we just can wrap this up. But like additional character assassination doesn't even make any sense. The the character that they had that was the uh that was a foreign correspondent that uh that like Brad Pitt's character has in who's like he's a sold he introduces mm-hmm. him he, he's the he's the native Afghani guy that was like he's a soldier yeah. and a scholar like he has all these scenes where he shows him his utmost respect he too as part of as like an like even as an attachment to the staff he doesn't get, he doesn't do anything he yeah. just shows up and is like just like acts like this fish out of water and then there's a random scene where they're like oh yeah he's also a muslim who drinks and and Oh, y- yeah. Yeah, he goes to the bar and gets fucking wasted. With, with the Navy the SEAL, the and they do staff. a stupid dance or something, and everyone's acting like, oh, yeah, this is... That, like, th- like, like it's it's all of these scenes they have to it, compound. It's like, it, 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 soldiers it, it, yeah. are alcoholics and retarded. They shouldn't be allowed in yeah. front of military equipment. Like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, no, yeah, the, 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 they found the only, like, college-educated Afghani... What, the only college educated Afghani defense force like captain who's also like a devout Muslim and he gets super extremely wasted. Extremely secular Muslim. Like, yeah. wait a second, what? And yes. And, and then uh, they, who fucking they knows? and they like, they make it seem like he's super important and then do nothing with it. And then they no, probably nothing gonna, happens. And then they probably nothing sit happens. there. They probably sit there jerking themselves off in the script room going, no, no, the theme is that no one listens to him. And it's like, well, we don't even get no one listens to him if you literally don't even have a scene where he says anything. Like, what? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And then, Especially, I I think what they tried to do with that is because in real life, McChrystal got a shit ton of civilian think tanks and, like, non-U.S. military people to help him come up and like with and like further develop coin, which is like counterinsurgency. And it really was not even accepted at all or even really liked by the military. And it was the civilians and the like the, the think tanks and the local like they're not necessarily like, like local, but like the, the and the actual like native people, population. Like the the actual like native militaries who were like yeah that seems like a great idea, and, and then they try and portray it as no everyone else thinks it's bad only the military thinks it's a good idea when the real life was it was the complete opposite the military thought it was kind of fucking dumb for the longest time until he managed to convince them that it was a feasible yeah that's you know the, it was a, the same feasible thing. strategy and everyone else was like no this is a great idea it's the same thing as like it's in the military and like you know no yeah no and, it, and, it, 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 it's just they're trying to be like no it wasn't obama that was dumb it was you it wasn't yeah. hillary and it's it it's wasn't the us exact same thing happened See, with the it, whole it like our side that was stupid it was yours yeah and it's like it's the exact same thing happened with the whole like roads and schools like they kept repeating that having brad Car- brad pitt's character repeat that like as if that would as it like as a, like as a brick joke like roads, we're gonna build roads and schools and 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 wonderful things in this, and it's like, all right, I get that the theme here that they're trying to push is that like these are not things that the population would value; they just want to be left alone. But that's fucking retarded because there has never been a there's never been a fucking ent- population in the history of everyone that anyone that the U.S. has ever had war with that after like after all the fighting was done with, we're like. No, you see all this free infrastructure you gave us with your taxpayer dollars? We hate Fuck that. you. We, we hate, hate it. it. Yeah. Get it out. Of- no. That that's a myth. That's a myth they made up to to like yeah, you, you see, infrastructure you see doesn't pick trains. sides. 
Yeah. You see all these trains and these these power plants and this is plumbing. We're just going to blow it up instead of using it now that you've left because we hate Look, you. Listen to me, liberals. Listen to me. Roads are not Islamophobic. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. Uh, last thing. Last point. Just the highest... The most compacted the hokiness of this whole thing ever got. And I mean, I'm just saying this because I know there's, there's more important things to talk about. Like, obviously, the 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 shenanigans with all the other news that we could have gone on about. Or eventually, that eventual CIA episode that we have to do. But the closing thing I will do with this, because this movie just incensed us so much. I have to say... The most, the thing that compounded the hokiness of this whole thing so much was the fucking random cameos that made no goddamn sense. Yeah. Going, when he, the scene when he goes to Germany and, like, tries to talk to their Congress to get them to send support, and the person who's, like, you know, try, it does the, like, some anvils need to be drop shit, just randomly Tilda Swinton pretending to be German out of fucking nowhere. Like, what the fuck was that about? And then what the fuck was it where they're like, the, they try to like end the whole thing on a joke was like, oh yeah, they sacked McChrystal because he didn't, couldn't do it. So they sent another guy who did, who was going to do the exact same thing. They sent Bob. And like, it's a cameo by fucking uh, like Russell Crowe randomly. Just, just in this movie for just the final joke scene. Like why? Like nobody knows. What the it, fuck it, it, was it, it, with it, this it, movie where they had that much leftover budget that they were like, no, we need to have Tilda Swinton and fucking Russell Crowe cameo for for a fucking like really heavy handed po uh, political scene of like a badly accented German woman telling this dude that his plan sucks and and it then... wasn't even that his plan sucked. They couldn't make an argument against the poorly delivered logic. Of Brad Pitt's in the math in general. the math of insurgency, one minus one equals two. Like whatever the fuck that was. No, no but like they he, couldn't even make a cogent argument against that. They all they did was just double down on the character attacks. Yeah. In that scene, they didn't even argue against coin because they knew that they would they couldn't really do so in a way that would really make sense. Because, or I mean, I don't even know if I don't. Does make sense. I don't even think that they understand it well enough to even argue it. Like, they I don't. I don't think they comprehend even what it is to the point that they could make an argument against it. Even the if the it people was a bad that made one. this movie certainly don't comprehend very much at all. But it, it, the whole scene with that German, the, the, the fake German lady, is just just more character assassination and armchair psychology and other dumb bullshit where they're just trying to make him look bad without really actually attacking anything he's, he's actually done, just things he might have done or things he might, you know, or, or things intrinsic to his person. This movie sucked. It was, it was, this it was movie really sucked. shit. The politics yeah. behind it sucked. Everyone who thought it was good sucks. All these people that are attacking Coin and McMahon and not McMahon, McChrystal McCry and and James Mattis and like our our current attempts at policy in in Afghanistan that make just such stupid arguments as as this place is called the graveyard of empires. We just have to leave. We can't just stay. Fuck you. Fuck all of you. Fuck you. you all yeah. suck. Yeah. 